Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the fifth, uh, fifth episode of the ArcaCast where we wage some war on video games. With me is the wonderful Lord Val, mixer partner uh. and streamer amazing and Bam Bam, my moderator from my channel. You guys might know him. So Hello. on today's menu is Streets of Rage 4. Mac Warrior 5, Destiny, yeah. yay, <laughs> Arborea, and Urtak. And then we are talking about two pieces of news that made the rounds last week. Because if you hear this, we have recorded it on Saturday, and you hear it next week. So, off we go, gentlemen. We start with Streets of Rage 4, I guess. Yep, sounds good. Yeah, I give you the rain, Bum Bum. Alright, so Streets of Rage 4, for someone who doesn't know, is a, it's a sequel that's been highly sought after, or people really have been asking for it. It's a sequel to the uh, beat-em-ups that started, I think, on Genesis. There was three of them, then a couple of spin-offs, and then nothing, as Sega decided that the games are not really viable. And uh, then for the sequels being picked up by Dot .emu and published and funded by Sega. It's more of a Sorry. fan recreation of probably what a proper Streets of Rage sequel would be. I've, I'm really mixed about it. Maybe because I'm more used to the Capcom uh, beat-em-ups. It feels oddly stiff for modern beat-em-up. A lot of the time I'm getting hit when I shouldn't be getting hit and the enemies are not getting hit when they should be get getting hit. Orko, have you played it yet? I played it a few times actually, yes. So I've played on normal difficulty because you said it might be an issue of the difficulty, at least the grapple attacks of the enemies. Yeah, yeah, it, I'm playing on hard. Yeah, it kind of felt a little bit off. Not as much as you say it does for me, but something is not quite right with the hit detection. Yeah, especially when it comes to enemies that come from diagonal. Because when the, it's it's alright when it's on a single plane, but as soon as you're uh, dealing with enemies that are coming from diagonals, from either up or down, coming at you, especially when they have a weapon, it comes really, really into focus when enemies have a knife and they can make this dash for you. And it can come even diagonal, and it's real. It seems like they have like high priority, so they go through any attack you throw at them, unless it's a star attack. Star attack, it's like a super, essentially a super attack that usually clears the screen or the near vicinity of a character. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's I think the major issue and the grabs. Uh, that's I think that's the worst in the second stage. There is enemy which is a policeman who has a taser, and those those enemies have insane priority on their grabs. And the grab, especially on a heart, takes away about third, nearly a half of your health. Yeah. And it becomes uh, really annoying when they can, uh, because they can ch uh, chain it. You get up and you get grabbed again, knocked down, and they essentially can just chain you to death. Yeah, can I weigh in here? Um, yeah. Isn't it, bam, bam, isn't it that they're trying to represent the struggle of those type of games, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, but uh, they're doing it the wrong way. I mean, yeah. I mean, I can't. Re I cannot remember going to the arcade when I was, you know, kid, and I was like, you know, that used to happen continuously on every single game. You know, they, they, you kick the, the freaking arcade because you couldn't even move, and they would, you know, no, grab the, your the game. Thing is, like, <laughs> so, uh, sorry, because I've been playing a lot of the old arcade games. You can get them. I play them on PS4. They sell them as a bundle. So I've been playing like the ones you can get, like Captain Commando, uh, Knights of the Round, stuff like that. Because uh -huh. I, I really like those games. Or the there's the ones you can get on, on Steam, the Mistara series, the Dungeons and Dragons ones done by Capcom, and they're really good. And it's like there's you know obviously like there's points where that can happen, but you you always have an out, mm -hmm. and you have very little tools to really get out here. Yeah. Of rage. Though there's stuff I like in it as well. I really like the art style. I like the like a it's a it's not a complete slant towards anime like anime manga style. It's like a combination of Western and Asian comics. Mm -hmm. The art style is great. I like the music. I think still though that like when it comes to reboots, I think still uh, 
what was it, Double Dragon Neon is still the best soundtrack out there. And I think it's also a better game. Other issue I have, and there's only one character that has a dash and becomes annoying when you want to close a uh, distance with enemies. It's the, the girl with the, what's her name? Cherry, I think it's her name. The girl with the guitar. She mm-hmm. has a dash. She's the only one. There's mecha- another mechanic I like is the, you remember when in the old games, they have attacks that take away health when you use them. Yeah. They have the same here, but it works in a similar vein to recovering lost damage in Bloodborne. Yeah. Where, yes, you use this attack. Wreath, reward, lose, kind of thing, yeah. isn't it? No, no, no. Like, the way I mean, uh, you, like, you use this attack, you lose your health. But from Bloodborne, uh, they took the mechanic where as you attack the enemies, you regain the health lost. Mm-hmm. But if you get hit, you lost, lose all of it. It's like it is risk and reward. Yeah. And I think uh, what they don't teach you, right, uh, what they sh- should is you need to use these attacks to get through the basic stages. But the way they, they don't signify that, oh, you can regain the lost health from these attacks. You essentially have to realize it on your own as you're playing the game. But you don't have the time really to look on your at your health bar and be like, oh, yeah, I'm regaining my health. Maybe I should use, use these more. Yeah. So it was just trial and, trial and error. Okay. And I think, yeah, really rough game. It needs fine tuning in the mechanics. I think it could be a good game. Like, I like some of the stuff that doesn't really get bogged down by the unbalanced mechanics. And if you have unbalanced mechanics in this kind of game, it just throws off the entire thing and it makes a really bad first impression. So if they fine tune these things like the hit detection, the priorities on moves and make it a bit clearer what the mechanics are. I think it would be a good game. It just needs, it needed some more time in the oven. Maybe like a couple of more weeks of playtesting, actually. A bit of polishing. Yeah. But what I'm saying, I mean, you can actually get the all the skins, isn't it? Streets of Rage 1 skins and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, their abilities, they don't have any special attacks or anything like that, which is. It's just a bit crazy because, I mean, you would think that, you know, you would invest your time into the game and then you could use those skins and then put these skins onto your character and then start playing the, yeah, the campaign even, all over again but you can't even do that isn't it there's even secrets in there i found a couple of the you can fight some classic bosses from the uh-huh. first first three games wow which is really neat uh, i f- i fought three of them though sometimes i'm not sure how to trigger them because at once i trigger them but the next one i can't mm-hmm. there's maybe some like score requirements and stuff but yeah, what I like, uh, there's the thing, it has more moves, more, more move variety than yeah. the old ones because you essentially have two sets of moves for your character, which is the basic ones, then you have the ones that take away health, and then you have the star, the super move. Yeah, and you can change the health moves and the normal moves, and you kind of have to. Mm-hmm. I like it. And then you have the typical like quarter circle and double tap forward attack yeah. to chain into combos like a specials it does like it does bring back memories man yeah yeah like if it's tighter if it gets tighter mm-hmm. in design it's gonna be a really good game i mean if if we talk about these kinds of games especially i would still suggest that probably first double dragon neon and then Rev- river city ransom girls oh yeah and if you are desperate for another go at that genre, then you can play Streets of Rage 4. Yeah, I would definitely see, wait and see if they patch things out. Yeah. If they see like the feedback from the player base. I haven't really checked the feedback because I've seen like some reviews that have been raving about it. And then I play, because that's why I played it. I was like, yeah, might as well give it a go. I like these games and they're been getting into yeah. reviews. And then I see this. And I'm not sure if there's like a disconnect because I don't know what games are, you know, the reviewers used to playing. And mm-hmm. because I come from background of fighting games and those classic games. And I I have probably certain like different expectations. So uh, yeah, I was a bit disappointed, but you know, yeah, I mean, you can it, patch it, out. Uh, it, to me, the Sunday game looks, you know, it, it looks, it, I think it's just more the, you know, the memories the, the, the game brings more yeah. than anything else. It's just yeah, it feels good to to watch the game. It's just not even play because actually the game, you know, some people might not know, but the game is not even full full price game. It's you know half of the price. Uh, yeah, a it's a, it's a budget game. game. Yeah, yeah, it's like a you know 
uh, half the price the game will be. So in that sense, I would say, you know, the, the game is well, well worth it. And, you know, someone like me brings a lot of memories, you know. It's 20, 21 pounds in the UK, so I believe it would be about 35 probably in the US, $35. Yeah, and it's on the Game Pass. Or thirty dollars in the UK. I mean, it's kind of like you know half the price of a normal you know AAA game. So uh, you know, I, I, I you know I picked it up because I was like you know I played on I played it offline because I I was watching you know one of the you know on the community of Mixer playing it. I was like mm -hmm. wow, it just it just brings back memories. I didn't even know the game came out. And I was like yo, I, I need to pick it up, and I picked it up. And I was like so happy when I was playing it. And exactly what you're saying, Bam Bam. I understand what you mean by you know the struggle of the movements you know and diagonal and all of that but i think they're kind of trying to represent the all the struggles you know what i mean how yeah. bad was the movement how difficult it was to get the hit and everything that's why you die most of the times so i think that's kind of what they were trying to you know to bring back a little bit yeah i mean there's there's but the problem is with it uh, there is a you know a good way to introduce challenge and old school style of challenge, and that there is a bad way. Mm -hmm. And I think the lack of proper telegraphing on the attacks, yeah, the proper animation, because I think the animation on the enemies could have been done better. It's it doesn't have enough frames and doesn't have enough distinct animations to really tell you what to expect. Mm -hmm. And the hitboxes are off. Some of them are just way larger than they look. I think the, the the most representative of that is this boss in the second stage, or even the first stage. Their attacks have hit you through way large, uh, way bigger distance and reach than they should by the actual sprite. Uh -huh. So you might be standing like at a spot where they, the, you know, the, the sprite, the animation doesn't hit you, but it yeah. still does. So I think that's a problem as well. Yeah, I mean, hitboxes yeah. are not as defined as they should be for this type of game. You need to be as accurate as possible to make it a really like a good feeling game. I'm not really sure to what extent they did that intentionally. Yeah, I think yeah, that, that that's the thing. I don't think there was enough play playtesting really put into it. I think th I, I I'm not sure how much of this is someone who didn't play a lot of these games or you know doesn't mm -hmm. really follow this type of thing would care about or notice it just is really apparent to me because like you said you come from a different background you play a lot of fighting games like street fighter and also these old games i mean i played them as well and it felt also a little bit off to me not as much as you or not as much as you say but for me it also felt kind of off ish it wasn't as precise as I would have wanted it to be, especially coming up from River City Ransom Girls, which is actually a really good game. But this one is... yeah, I still like it. I mean, from yeah. what I've played, it's it's a good game. I, I don't want to just say it's flat out bad and unplayable. It's not, actually. No, it's no, it's good. That, yeah. It's good. I think you can have a fun time with it. They just... If you want more out of it, or if you're something, someone like Bam Bam, who is just someone who wants these pristine and meticulously designed gameplay mechanics, then you might feel that this game feels off to you. Yeah, I mean, it's a good comparison would be if you're playing, say, Doom 2016, and then you go back and play something from like a mid-sized developer, a shooter. It's gonna feel a bit off because you know how it feels to play a really like fine-tuned shooter. That's like the best comparison I can make at this point. Like playing Doom 2016 and then go back and play Terminator Resistance. Probably, yeah. It's like the fundamentals are there, but something feels a bit off, yeah. and it's just it's making you frustrated because you want to like it. Like I would say, like if you're not hardcore or uh, <laughs> like a aficionado of games or classic brawlers and you like the look of streets of streets of rage 4 give it a go it's a budget price game and it's gonna keep you up for a while because it's mm. really tough i love that i love that and i'm yeah. uh, you know I'm, a, I'm kind of a like you say i'm a bit of a aficionado on the game it's not like 
I, I play much. I, I remember playing the arcade, you know, the, the arcades, uh, this game, you know, where my parents used to take me. So it's like, it just felt good to me. Uh, the, the, the whole jumping and the buffing and, uh, you know, uh, it's just those games, I really enjoyed them at, at that time. I was like, it was, you know, the struggle to me was overshadowed by the memories. So that's why I really enjoyed it. And I see a lot of people enjoying it. Like, there is a lot. I, obviously, the game might get might need some improvements, and I don't know if they're planning on uh, keep patching the game and keep updating the game. But if they do, like, I don't know, they, they're going to end up with a brilliant, in my opinion, brilliant game. Yeah, if they did it, tighten up all the issues I have with it, it it's going to be a really, really good game. Probably even might surpass Double Dragon Neon. I wouldn't be surprised if they, you know, they, they, they added some stuff and they kept supporting. If they keep supporting the game, that, you know, they, they, they already have the base, which is already good in my eyes. I guess that they will even further improve the game and put more stuff, you know, like the, the like the skins, I think it's just a brilliant move. You know, you can get like the eight bit kind of looking skins, you know what I mean? That yeah. is, that is crazy to me. I was like, when I watched that for the first time, I was like, oh my God. Oh, this is the guy I used to play just, with. Feels good, man. All right. Then Streets of Rage 4, for everyone who wants a clobber in good time. You guys, it's on Game Pass, so it wouldn't hurt to try it out anyways. So, there you go. Moving on to the next Game Pass game. Mech Warrior 5. Yay. Yay. You sound excited. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you sound yeah. very, very excited. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Mech Warrior 5 Mercenaries. It's, um, I don't know how long, but it's almost been 15 years since the last one, I think. So I was really, really excited to play it. And underneath all the fluff that I think it's unnecessary for it, it's a really good game. It's a mech simulator, and it's not a mecha. It's not a Japanese-style mecha game. If you know what Battletech is, it's this sort of grounded sci-fi universe where there are these battle uh, battle mechs, mm -hmm. and they, uh, they ha the handling of these mechs is more akin to a tank than a you know a Gundam. So you have your legs and torso can move independently, and is this it feels also really heavy and it's slow. It's more it's much more tactical. So that's like the basic description of Battle Tech. Uh, Mech Warrior Five. It's a it's a long way sequel, and it's I'm really con confuse what they were trying to do because the gameplay itself if you've played battle is what is it uh, mech warrior online it plays sort of like that because it's the same developers so it's a really good feeling gameplay where you control this heavy ass mech with really devastating weapons that feel great to shoot it looks the part when you shoot a volley of rockets at a building it just disintegrates and then they tack on a story for the single player which i couldn't care less for with a clunky interface if you're inside a mech the game is great if you like more tactical slower action gameplay with some small strategy elements it's a really good game that also looks beautiful because it's cry engine but then they tack on this story with cardboard characters and UI that is really confused about what it wants to be. At one point it's XCOM 2 and then they have you just walk about in a 3D environment which is wholly unnecessary and just slows the game down. I don't know, have you any of you played it yet? Yes, I did. Yeah, what do you think, Orko? Yeah, I pretty much also agree with you there. But I would even go so far and say that the gameplay isn't all that hot. Even if you're sitting in a mech. I mean, I still remember Mac Warrior 3 like it was yesterday. And that was in the heyday when I was also playing the tabletop game. And I'm, I'm a massive fan of the tabletop game. Or was. I used to play it. I should give this Orc model nerd glasses at some point. <laughs> I used to play just about anything that had Mac Warrior on it. And I used to love it. And this one is a good game, a good mecha game, but I'd say it's a middling, mediocre Mac Warrior game. Yeah, I mean, nothing's gonna be as good as Mac Warrior 2 and 3. Also, what I hoped that they would do is because Battletech overall is a combined assault warfare, so it shouldn't be just the mechs. And yeah. while your enemies can be, you know, tanks, helicopters, and mechs, 
you can only take control of a mech and i think like it's about like high time that they actually did the combined warfare because it would help to illustrate the scale of it because yeah. it feels weird at times when i'm in atlas and it doesn't feel like i'm walking in this you know hundreds of tons of metal and guns it just feels like i'm in a mech and i could be in a you know a small like a centurion and it feels the same way the only difference is how fast i can walk it would help it a lot i agree to, to illustrate the scale it would make it feel grander i think as well i have not played this one yet i will but i've played the, you know the mecha who, who hasn't played if you had a pc or i remember going to my friend's house on his pc and playing mech warrior man like that was Amazing. Uh, it just, uh, to me, well, for what I've seen so far, it just seems like it's a slow and clunky, like kind of like a slow, uh, respecting, you know, how the, the mechs feel. But yeah. also, I, I gotta give it, I got one, you know, I found one fault into this game. Uh, I don't usually, I try to, as you guys, you guys know me, I try to find the positive always on, yeah. on every single side. But I found a negative on this one. Ooh. Not only... Ooh. Look, feel, yeah, uh, that, that's very <laughs> rare of me. But this game, I was kind of disappointed for what I was saying because it, it really, when I feel disappointed about one game, it's like I really express it because it's like it feels slow. Not only slow, but I mean, I know the feeling of the game has to be slow. And it's the, you know, the, the, the don't, don't forget what we used to play. We used to play Make Warrior. Yeah. Make Warrior was like really slow. You know, legs were yeah. going the wrong way. You could be looking one way, but you maybe the first twenty minutes you didn't know what you were doing. But after you know, twenty minutes, you know exactly where your yeah. legs are going and what you're looking, and then you you know it feels familiar. But what I'm trying to say is, the, but when there is a lot of things going on on the screen at the same time, the FPS drop big time. Yeah, I don't know. It I'm feels... getting steady frame rate, but it might be. It just feels clunky. It just yeah. it looks clunky, which is even worse. And that, to me, on on you know nowadays on 2020, it's just it's just no, that's a no no. If if you're releasing a game, you know, after so many years, there is such a classic, there is so many people that want to play, you gotta deliver. I mean, you got to be, you know, the, the graphics at least, you know, the FPS at least have to look good. You know, you gotta hit that either 30 max, uh, I mean, 30 FPS steady and doesn't go any under that, or you gotta hit 60 FPS. Yeah, I think uh, this is also the issue of the engine, which doesn't like doesn't, you know, change anything. It should still be like optimized to hit. Yeah, uh, everything, everything else, you know, it look it feels good, looks good. The game, I mean, like, but when you moving into the mech, I was like, wow, the FPS drop, man. Like you can tell from miles away. No, I don't know because like for myself, the gameplay uh, feels smooth. Like I don't get any massive drops you... or any drops at all. My problem, biggest problem with it is the loading times, which are hilariously long. I, mean, like, they're, I think two, they're like a minute and a half. They, le they learned that from Bungie. Staring right? at the loading screen. <laughs> They've learned like, that from Bungie. 100%. Yeah, I could probably just go and make a coffee, come back, and the game will still be loading. So just for clarification, I guess you look more... You you say you didn't play it well. The I've FPS. Been I've been watching it. Yeah, uh, it, it just feels like. Was it console? Was it uh, console? It was, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you played it on PC, probably. Bum bum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm playing. Yeah. PC. Okay. That's that's probably it's poorly optimized for consoles. I can see that it's because not, not optimized for console. Yeah, I mean it's also probably not optimized for PC because the Cry Engine doesn't play ball very well at some points. Yeah. It's a good engine, but it has issues. That's yeah, why. I mean, yeah, the engine is great for big maps, which is yeah. these games are like uh, each map is at least ten kilometers squared, so it's a decent size map, and that's how BattleTech is. It's in usually the engagement isn't you know at any shorter distance than like half a kilometer, so that makes sense. But yeah, I think the engine is showing its limitations here. Yeah, it's just. But what, what, what I felt when I was watching it is like, yeah, yeah. you know, it's just when something is happening, you know, when the, the, the building is getting destroyed yeah, and yeah. there is another mecha in front of you or something, that all of the sudden, in my eyes, there is there was FPS drop everywhere. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah, yeah. it was feeling even slower than it usually is. And that is a no-no for me right now. Like, okay, nowadays, yeah. I, I would expect at least a steady, you know what I mean? 
uh, the same as you're moving and everything the same FPS. It just needs to feel as smooth as everything else. If if every time every single time I'm going to encounter a fight, I'm going to yeah. go down in, in, in FPS. It's like, you know, it puts me off. Uh, that's yeah. the thing put me off about the game. Uh, yeah, sure. that, that feel that fe you know that feeling that I got. Mm -hmm. Oh wow, it seems like it's dropping every single time. Um, you know, you are facing someone else. So it might not be the case uh, for console because it maybe uh, me may be better optimized for console or might be. A, a PC only, or might be improved in the future with a patch or something. Oh, yeah, as just... of today, for what I'm saying, it is, you know, it, that that was the feeling that I got. That was, you know, that's... the one thing I took from the game. That's something I really like. A, a very, very critical Val is something we don't have very often. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't yeah. happen. <laughs> 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 yeah. Summon the demon more often. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Also, like I said, Mac Warrior 5 is on Game Pass. If you don't have issues with frame rate drops, then check it out. Yeah, I mean, it's a. It's not... I, you can play Scrimmage, which is good. You can completely circ circumvent the campaign and just play Scrimmage yeah. and instant action or multiplayer, yeah. which is probably which are the two best parts of the game. Just avoid the campaign, it's a slog. Or, I have a better suggestion. You just boot up the strategy game they released two years ago and have fun with that. I still have to play that, actually. <laughs> I have it. Then do it. It's good. I mean, it's not also not perfect, but I prefer it probably to that one. Yeah, or if you have it, just, you know, install MechWarrior 3. Yeah. But who has <laughs> that these days That's except me? <laughs> That's a good game. Yeah. yeah. About for that one. I still have the CD here somewhere. Oh, man. Oof. I think I have like yeah, a. I remember going to my friend's house, you know, playing it on yeah. his PC, man. It was just such a, you know, great game. Yeah, I'm, I don't have them here, but I'm very sure I still have the big boxes for two and three back home. Nice. Oh god, I miss those big game boxes. I miss them so oh, yeah. much. I'm With not the sure manual that. and everything inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying yeah. almost PC boxes. <laughs> and whoever, then whoever read the, did you ever read the the, the manual? Yes, yeah, I there, actually you have to did. read them. Actually, yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, never, I never read. There them. were no. Like, oh, that's cool. Any pictures? No, nothing. There you go. <laughs> they, they, there were no, there were no tutorials and nothing. You had to read them. Yeah. I still remember the manual for Diablo One. That thing had an entire short story in there. Yeah. <laughs> I just remember, you know, all those like Baldur's Gate, Icewind Dale, Planescape yeah. Tournament manuals. Those things had like short stories, art, and some of them were like invaluable because if you wanted to make up like a proper character, they had like suggestions how to make a decent character that will not screw you over. So yeah, like especially for like old school RPGs, you needed those. And for the Mac Warrior games, hell yeah, because like I'm not yes. sure those games like the controls spent the entire keyboard, so you kind of <laughs> needed them. Yeah. I just the if you if you really want to simulate a mech, you need a keyboard for it. Or why yeah. do you think Steel Battalion was released with an entire controller on its own? Orco. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's nothing like a joystick. True. Joystick. Mech True. Warrior with a joystick. That is the coolest thing ever. I actually played it with the joystick uh I played it a couple of times. Uh, I can't remember what it was. It was uh, on a on a you know on a shop or a gaming shop, and they had it with the with the joystick back home, and it was like, wow, wow, well, was you know, like that was at that time. Obviously, I was like you know twelve or or thirteen. And I was like, oh my goodness, me, it's amazing. I'm going to play blow your mind right now. You know how my setup for Mac Warrior Three looked. Hmm. Two joysticks, one controlling the upper body, one controlling the lower body, <laughs> and the rest keyboard. Out. No, <laughs> it was really like that. <laughs> oh my god! This is that. I mean, yeah. that must feel like really cool. Man. Yeah, I used um, to have like a joystick, and you remember those like small keypad, uh, keypads or keyboards you could buy, which yeah. was like just yeah. twelve or sixteen keys. Yeah, yeah, I had that with the joystick. <laughs> that, that, yeah, that, that's actually really handy if you're playing that, that game. Also, right. we... speaking of like alternative control schemes, do you remember the Steel Battalion sequel? Yes, 
That was a you know how great it would be in a VR. Yes. Because those controls actually work. If the game would have been awesome in VR. Yeah, if hmm. if the controls actually worked. I mean, right. it would work because it's like you know, um, VR is much more accurate than Kinect. Yeah. Also. Don't give Capcom ideas. No. <laughs> we don't do that for free here. Moving on. Moving yeah, exactly. On. Moving on. Capcom. You better pay me. <laughs> they won't. Uh, no. <laughs> no chance. Okay. All right. We move on. I have two games to cover, actually, which I just want to say short pieces about. Um, I did an indie showcase on... I was playing two indie games. One is called Arborea, which is basically a Souls-like with roguelite elements, and it's actually pretty fun. You play as a troll, which is fitting to an extent, <laughs> and you just go down a dungeon, and if you die, you die. Your souls, or the equivalent of this game, get transferred over to the gods. You can buy some benefits for the next character. It's actually pretty neat, so they put some effort into it. The issue I have with it is combat feels floaty sometimes, mm -hmm. and it really needs some time in the cooker. They released it on early access, but I don't like this it's still early access moinker. Get your goddamn games ready for early access, guys. At least make sure the combat works properly. So the way it transfers the experience from the previous runs, is it kind of like the gold and experience from when you die in the Rogue Legacy? Kind of, when you yes. Like a, when you build up like a tree of upgrades that carry over into like the, each next run. Yeah. A little, a little bit. You get like either disadvantages or advantages. So your trolls you go in with are randomly generated so they can have anything from 10 to 15 in their three attributes and um, have different variations of resistances and whatnot mm -hmm. and if you spend the souls you have left i just say souls because they have some weird name for it which i can't remember you basically get like small bonuses like plus one to every attribute, plus one to all resistances. Oh, it's that's, like small yeah. incremental. Yeah, up. that's okay. that's how it works. And if you don't spend it, the gods will get mad at you and tell you to f*** off and distract you. Oh, sounds fun. Yeah. <laughs> the next one is, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I mean, I looked some screenshots. It looks colorful, at least. Yeah, it's like I said, the art style is. Pre uh, no, I didn't say that, but the art style looks pretty good. I have yeah. never heard of the game, so. And another showcase I did was Urtuk, um, which is a turn based strategy game, which I liked a lot. Um, the art style was kind of remis reminiscent of Darkest Dungeon. Oh, nice. So it has that going for, and the mechanics are extremely solid, so. You use a lot of the terrain to your advantage, like kick enemies in pits and they die instantly. Nice. That's actually fun. <laughs> and it's also for a turn-based strategy game. It's really violent. That's also good. Yeah, it, and it looks like they, sorry, like they took more a thought to the actual mechanics. Because like I can't remember the last time you could actually move enemies around to your advantage. Yeah. Are both of the games on PC only. Yeah, both on early access at the moment. So full disclosure, also here keys from I received the keys from the developers. Val, take it away. Destiny. Destiny. <laughs> <laughs> it's Destiny time. So here we go. What? <laughs> what's new to Destiny? You ask me. Well, not much. But uh, we got uh, some very exciting news. Uh, we just unlocked last Thursday the bugged quest. No surprise, uh, something bugged on Destiny. <laughs> As usual. But yeah, we got Pearl Winter Slide, which is one of the classic weapons, a shotgun from Destiny 1, uh, which made a comeback to, to Destiny now. And we had the quest, kind of, yeah, we could progress towards the quest and everything, but 
we uh, the last step was booked for a few days and we could not progress towards you know uh, getting the actual weapon so that's being unlocked now since last Thursday so you can now go and pick up your fell winter slide since last Thursday and now we got the new as you all know a season on destiny sending season 10 is ending uh in 17 days it's about a couple of weeks I think it's the 4th of June I believe is the the, the day uh, the season ends we're moving on to the season of the arrival which means the darkness is arriving to destiny to the famous the, you know the infamous Dorito ships oh, are arriving Dorito yeah ships. <laughs> yeah because they, they like Captain triangle Keely. <laughs> yeah they call it Dorito <laughs> ships because you know they, they kind of like triangle yeah, yeah. ships so that's kind of like uh, for those who don't know about destiny the, the, the darkness is like the big big bad omnipresent bad you know that we all know about or we never seen it's something that Bungie said it wasn't coming anytime soon uh, that was kind of you know the deal with activision and the games and you know there's a lot of factors that you know were in there so because they didn't know what the darkness was and stuff like that so they since they split from activision i think Bungie is full on let's throw everything out let's give you you know let's give you guys the story let's give you guys everything you guys want because uh, i think they realized that you know there's so much fan base and so much so many people that you know they love the game and they want yeah. to keep moving the story forward so we are finally going to see the, the you know the Doritos ships we're going to see the darkness the, the real bad guy that is actually coming to to destiny so yeah that is coming i mean we're going to kind of see my guess if you ask me my personal guess no one knows what's going to happen because they haven't announced absolutely nothing about the game, about the new season or the new expansion. They, like they, they are keeping everything full, like secret. Usually they announce everything, like let's say they announce the new season a couple of weeks before the actual seasons. They kind of give you the hints and, you know, this is what you're going to do. These are the new activities. This is what you're going to encounter and whatnot. Uh, this time is two weeks uh, already before the, the new season. We haven't heard anything because I think they have everything big. And what I mean by big, it's really big on Destiny. It's something that is, you know, that, that's something that's been cooking for years. Oh, yeah. So they don't want people d data mining or leaking exactly. stuff. So they're just exactly. holding back. Yeah. Exactly. And I think they, they're keeping it full on secret. They're keeping it. You know the darkness this is the big thing this is what we all we've been waiting for and they are arriving and if you ask me you know the, the first thing that's going to happen is one of the planets on destiny is going to disappear my personal bet is on titan i believe titan is going to disappear and io is rumored to be disappear, disappearing as well it is an evolving world uh you guys you know you've all i think you've all played world of warcraft at some point isn't it yeah I actually have never played World of Warcraft. <laughs> oh, bla that's blasphemy. That's blasphemy. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you, you, we all know when Cataclysm came, the whole of, the, the, you know, the whole of World of Warcraft changed. Everything changed. Yeah. yeah. Uh, World of Warcraft, as, as, as we knew, uh, wasn't there anymore. So, I think that's going to happen at some point on this. I mean, we, uh, like... People that know about Bungie, people that know about, you know, the whole story of uh, Destiny and all this stuff, if you know about it, you know Luke Smith, which is the you know the captain of the ship on 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 Destiny and Bungie. He's a big fan of the of World of Warcraft. He likes you know everything about World of Warcraft, how the game plays, you know the community events, uh, you know everything else. And I think this is actually coming from the. This is actually him saying, "Yo, World of Warcraft changed the entire world in one expansion, and everything was wiped clean." New, pla new, new new areas, areas that change and stuff like that. I think that's going to happen on Destiny. If it happens, I call the heat first, okay? So I want you everyone to know. <laughs> if, like, I think I, I honestly think it's going to happen. You know, they're going to change because I know Luke Smith, you know, after so many years, you know, seven years following this game, I know how, you know, Luke Smith kind of works when he's picking up stuff. You know, Luke Smith was the creator of uh, Taken King on Destiny 1. I don't know if you guys know uh, the expansion, the Taken King on Destiny 1. Oh, uh, sorry. I that haven't was played Bungie. it, but I watched it. Yeah, yeah that was Bungie at, the, at its best. Like, mm. the, 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 you know, nothing gets any better than on Destiny than the Taken King. That was the biggest expansion, the, 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 you know, the most 
changing expansion on the entire game. And that expansion was created by Lugsmith. Oh, yeah. Cool. So if you are a fan of Destiny and you're a fan of, you know, the entire, you know, the story and world and lore of Destiny, mm -hmm. you have to be excited for what's coming because Lucas Smith has taken, he's taking Destiny again. He is in charge of what's going to happen from now on. I am quite excited because, you know, we're going to learn about the darkness and he's the one saying, you know, let's throw it out there. This is what we got. This is what we're going to be showing. The biggest stuff is going to probably be coming on the next expansion about September, October. This is when uh, Bungie releases the big expansions on, on Destiny, like the big, heavy, you know, full price expansions. I think what we're going to see now is going to be an introduction to it. There's going to be, you know, you're going to see this pyramid, you know, uh, maybe one planet is going to disappear. I would say Titan is going to disappear on the next season. Uh, if you ask me, it's, it's a bit of a bold move because you're going to get rid of one planet for no reason at all. And in the middle of the, you know, the, the, the game of the the middle of the expansions because you know the big expansion is you know this is just it's just a season it's not a, an expansion they might go and say you know even though we release shadow cape we're gonna get rid of one planet boom there you go so you kind of setting up the what's gonna happen in the future i know Lucas smith wants to not just evolve the world and and not the world the planets and everything evolve the game but he wants to reduce the size of the game so it's more accessible for for the new players you know what i mean because at the end of the day the game is free to play nowadays so you can pick up the game and play obviously you know if you want to play the story if you want to play the new activities you have to pay for it uh, as as you know obviously um but yeah uh, he's trying to reduce the game so those new you know kindergartens you know the new the new players don't feel so overwhelmed by everything that is going on you know so many planets and so many activities and so many things so they kind of like want to reduce everything and that's why i say at least a couple of planets are going to be destroyed yeah i mean i i played it about a year ago mm -hmm. i got through the story through the core story i finished also the osiris quest and then i think I got on a Mars, and that's where I stopped, because I was like, "Yeah, I'm." My, like, my thing with Destiny is that, like, it doesn't matter where I am; it still feels samey. And I'm also, I at the time I started playing Warframe, and I just felt Warframe was something I enjoyed more, because Warframe did similar thing. They, I think, until 2015, it was just Space Ninjas. You know, going on a map, killing everything, trying to loot stuff, mm -hmm. and then they, uh, they, I think they did what probably if Destiny is gonna do something, as you described, did it that as well, which was a second dream, and that changed the game a lot. It was a secret. It was a big story quest that nobody expected, and nobody knew what was what it was going in, mm -hmm. and then they unveiled this big big thing, which then you finish the quest and you actually realized that they added like a whole slew of new mechanics yeah. that expanded the game and then from there they started adding a new story and now that like you have first had Archwing which was like a, a jetpack which you could fly in space and recently I think last year they added actual like full cruise ships battles mm -hmm. and if uh, Destiny is going to do like a full shake up I think they might do something similar where they bring the battles out into space as well. Already, I get what you mean, but you have played yeah. Destiny when it was. I would say Destiny 2 was at its lowest when you played it. Yeah, it felt like, like it, yeah. Yeah, it is. It, is, it was not finished. It had so many issues. So I would recommend you to go and check it out now. Uh, it is... Yeah you will 100 percent. i assure you you will not be disappointed because there's so many um what can i say there's so depth of customization now not just the way you look but your stats your weapons every single piece of gear is different because you might like some stats and other person might like some other stats and then within the stats you can fully customize it you can further customize it to a set of weapons you can put customizers to uh, your super you can customize it to your grenades 
Yeah, so, I that yeah, I had that. You could like because you were unlocking uh customizations or variations of your skills. Exactly. It you just completely love... changes yeah. the game. It, the, yeah. game, the game is nowhere near like what you saw before, it is not a representation of where the game it is right now. We mm -hmm. have to admit, with the game at that point, the state of the game was really poor. Like, um, my yeah, because I felt like the combat also could have used some tightening up, but I think it's hard to do it because you're playing an online shooter, mm -hmm. and those games can't be as tight as something you play also offline. Yeah. So. And I just didn't care as much for the story, but at the same time, I didn't play Destiny 1 all that much. I've just tried it for like 20 minutes. Yeah. Because I, I had that. some a free free trial, whatever. And I think the story, yeah, like if I played the first one, maybe I'd care more. Yeah. But it, yeah, it's, it's maybe it's my fault jumping no. into the second game. But uh, it's one of those franchises that you need to, obviously, it's like, if you jump into Halo now, like, you're going to be missing out on so many things. You don't probably... Yeah, if you play, like, Halo to... 5 yeah. now, yeah. You you might not know what's going on. So the same thing happens with Destiny. At the end of the day, we got to remember that Destiny is a game that has evolved throughout six years. So there is six years of a story which you have to catch up when you start playing. So obviously, you know, that's a big difference. Right now, it's like what I'm saying, you can jump in right now. You don't have to know anything about the story. You can just jump in, play PvP, play PvE, um, you know, do your things. Uh, obviously, if you want to play, like I said before, if you want to play the new expansions, you want to play like the new stuff, obviously you have to pay for it. You have to pay the expansion for it. Um, yeah. Other than that, it just feels good. Uh, uh, the gameplay, like I understand what you're saying, but there is no better gunplay, in my opinion, than the, the, the Bungie's one, than Destiny. No game in my entire life, including all the Call of Duties, including uh, Halos, has ever felt like Destiny feels. People might say the game is dead. The game keeps having millions and millions of players because they just the gunplay feels good. The jumping feels good, guns feels good, and everything, you know, there's so, you know, the variation, every single weapon feels different, every single weapon shakes differently, every single weapon has a heavy feeling to it. In that sense, it's Bungie what it does best, like Halo 1, Halo 2, isn't it? When yeah. I mean, Bungie created that, it's just those games were different. Those games were like out of these, you know, out of like whatever we knew at that point, and they came out with that excellent, you know, Halo games, which we all know. So Destiny is the same thing, basically. I would, the, what I always say, you know, to new people on Destiny is, you remember Halo? Yes, mm -hmm. Halo on steroids. There you go. That's Destiny. I mean, there's only a few like in-game shotguns that feel as bungee shotguns. That's that's a true. It's thing, it's bungee guns. Obviously, you have to like it yeah. if you're a Call of Duty guy. And you like how the weapons, you know, you need the weapons to feel realistic. Obviously, Destiny is not a game for you because you're shooting aliens. No, <laughs> no, no. That's not, because I like Halo games. Yeah, like, I, I like kind Halo of, yeah. One I kind of ODST. tend to go, I like shooting aliens rather than human beings. So that's why I think I kind of tend to go for these kind of games, you know what I mean? So uh, I, in my inside, is something feels bad. Even though I like Call of Duty and stuff like that, you know, I'm not the biggest fan, but I do like playing them. Or it just to me, kind of inside me, something feels good about shooting aliens rather than other humans. You know what I mean? Also, um, I think the biggest pro I have for Destiny 2, like from what I've played, the raids and the, like the dungeons, those are is, those are fun. Those are fun. Are uh, we doing carries? I don't know if Olko knows about it because Olko has been kind of around on Mixer quite uh, quite often. I don't know if you've seen me doing uh, the raids, Olko. Yes. When we're doing the carries, I mean, though, those are intense moments. And those, this is something I, I, I would say every single person playing uh, Destiny has to experience at some point. That's why we do the, you know, I do the great carries almost daily because it is experience, you know, when everyone starts jumping when we finish the, the raid or something. It is not easy. You need to invest a good, you know, couple of hours. It's not like World of Warcraft, obviously. World of Warcraft, you need. <laughs> probably your entire day to clear one raid. I don't well, think um, anymore. I think it, t t like these days, they're much shorter. They, I think they, they realize that not a whole lot of people have time to finish like a six, eight hour raid. Yeah. So they, I think mo the biggest ones tend to be two hours max. Yeah. Yeah. But, but yeah. 
it, with experience team if you are teaching a new team you probably spend about five hours on it so basically it's exactly the same thing as destiny is a bit shorter than that around i would say a clear of a kind of like normal raid will be around one hour one hour and a half if you carrying someone you probably spend about three four hours on it so it's kind of like half an hour one hour less than world of warcraft in that sense obviously you're just shooting people you don't have a million abilities with you know 10 people around you only six people and that's it but uh the 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 if you haven't done a raid on on world of warcraft before you don't know the feeling you don't know how what, you know the feeling of beating a boss and being able to get a gun and maybe you get the gun that you've been waiting for for yeah. so long and uh, that is something uh, that's why we do this that's why we do the carries and everything because i want everyone to experience that you know that uh, that uh, you know excitement of of finishing the boss and finally getting something yeah. i just had a flashback to a sense of virtue from final fantasy 11 where they have to nerf it to 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 the ground do you guys know about it no. It was a world boss that Square Enix decided it's going to be a good choice to make it about a 22 hour raid. <laughs> wow. And that was like a der the developer's choice. And then the uh, news of people passing out at their computers came out, so they had to change it. <laughs> and then every time somebody found a way to cheese it, they fixed it. And then they release a guide, and the guide's not viable two days after they post it because they fixed the, the strategy they used in the guide. Oh, that's brilliant. To make it faster. <laughs> I mean, to, those were the days, man. Today in master classes of game design, essence of exactly. Virtue. Okay, so I have two more or one more question to Val about Destiny Two. Uh huh. I'm curious, what, what do you think? Uh, if you look at Destiny 2 in its current state, how long do you think will it be still around until we see Destiny 3? Or do you think Bungie will just forego Destiny 3 just to keep Destiny 2 alive and continually expand it and build on it? I mean, we could, I could go on for hours about this subject because it's been, you know, I kind of like, I'm, as you know, I'm a big fan of Destiny. I'm always around looking for, you know, uh, what's new and whatnot. Um, but I would say it, the short answer is Destiny 3 2022, okay. in my opinion. Okay. That's that's a fair answer. We can expand on this question maybe next time. And because I could spend another half an hour talking about why in... and the reasons why. So we may, maybe we might leave it for the next episode, uh, for the next uh podcast and i can further you know kind of explain why i think exactly. it's gonna be around 2022 exactly that's what i'm saying also in terms of gunplay tarkov has the best gunplay fight me also in terms of go ahead no um also in terms of uh dead games if people say destiny 2 is a dead game they never played culling 2 i guess because <laughs> This is a nice segue into our next a topic. <laughs> it's a segue and a half. We still have a long, 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 long time of Destiny. I don't think Bungie's going to drop that IP anytime soon. But let's talk about the news. Culling is back. The game no one really asked for is back. What do you guys say? Um, we'll see for how long it's back. It might just <laughs> return to the grave very soon. <laughs> yes, it probably will. Did did you did you see that well? Because this is actually interesting. This is more your territory for now because it's actually releasing on Xbox or is released on Xbox already. Okay, I haven't heard of the game. So the the thing is. To give you a good laugh, The Culling was an early access game years back before the entire Battle Royale craze started, and it yeah. was a Battle Royale game. It was actually a decent Battle Royale game. Then, okay. the developer got greedy, started changing everything up to accommodate the lowest common denominator, and the game fizzled out from there. It's a case study what happens when a developer gets greedy. Then they had the bright idea to release the Culling 2, okay. which was was a Steam release, early access, had a peak of 250 players, and it's, they it's pulled kind of it. Like the, the Culling 2020, they, they call it, isn't it? Yeah. And they pulled it from Steam one week after its release because they had like no players. Mm -hmm. Talking about. Everyone, yeah. yeah. 
talking about dead games. <laughs> yeah. Nobody, nobody ever played that. I mean, except for 250 poor souls who bought, bought it at launch. Probably and, more influencers. <laughs> yeah, and it was, as far as I heard, a terrible, terrible ordeal. So they basically made a PUBG clone that looked, played, and was worse in any department you can imagine than PUBG. It's also on first person completely, isn't it? Yeah. And now they are coming back with Culling 1 on Xbox. And they're, they're calling Origins. I'm yeah. actually watching it right now. Yeah, so and yeah, their well. and their and their monetization model is amazing. Yes, so it's beautiful. It's, it's a trash it's, fire. It, it's not no, it's it's beyond a trash fire. It's you pay seven bucks up front to play the game. And they give you ten tokens. Guess what that means? You can play ten matches a day. If you want to play more, you have to shell out cash. Really? Yeah. We have been joking for years that is that this is something EA would do. Yet here is an indie company from Canada doing this. It's it's brilliant. Why? This is what this do do because they don't like their customer base. Um, I don't think. Why would I mean, they do that? I would is guess a that question from... we all had. <laughs> This is I mean, why I, would, I wouldn't be surprised if I saw EA at the end of the credits, but man, <laughs> wow. And I mean, like, you have to watch the announcement video to get the full effect. Yeah, where they, they backpedaled it. It used to be you could play one game a I'm day before you have to pay. I'm watching it. It's just I do not get absolutely nothing about the game. Like, I, because I, you obviously know what the calling is, right? Such a popular game. Yeah, so exactly. They just need to announce it. It's back, and you're yeah. gonna go right there. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Well, um, we might be surprised. I don't know. Maybe they pull a lot of people. I, in I don't. I don't think we will be surprised. I don't. I mean, I I mean, let let let's be let's be very real here for a second. I don't see this working for more than like one month. I give them I give one them month. Like a week. And then they pull it and refund everyone again. <laughs> Who in their mind would ever think that that is a good system? The the CEO of this company. That's who who thought it was a good idea to do that. I mean, you can't make this up. People were joking for years that this is the next step of electronic arts. And here we are in 2020 and someone actually did it. And it's not electronic arts. The times we live in. Oh my goodness me. Brilliant. Um, the best I mean, part... In my opinion, the times of, you know, be, be having to pay for... I don't know, having to pay for, for games. Uh, that was, you know, I think the last game that actually has done that, or keeps doing it, is World of Warcraft. You still have to pay a monthly fee to play the game. Obviously, you got no limit the game, obviously. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but it feels like a free-to-play mobile kind of predatory system. It is. Yeah, yeah. it's straight up like a you know. I mean, knockoff PUBG Chinese mobile game. They they also have, I mean, to to their honor, they also have passes. Like I think you have to pay four like dollars or something. dollars a month to get like a full pass. Yeah. So you can play like a month so like they have like a subscription pass yeah but it, they still like even if it's like just eight or whatever dollars it doesn't matter you still have an upfront cost on what is essentially a free-to-play game yeah and not not i mean the you could also argue that the upfront cost is very low but i think a battle royale and then telling people hey you can play only so many matches when you Paid your upfront cost. Nice. Yeah. Is absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, because like some rounds can last just a minute because exactly. you just get a bad spawn. Yeah. You you just get one tap. I know that from. Yeah. I mean, Tarkov isn't really a battle royale, but it happened to me once or twice, spawning in, walking one step, and then getting a headshot. Yeah. And that's 
culling that can happen to you as well there. You can just die out of random shenanigans the game pulls on you. There, there, there go your 10 tokens, right? And then they ask you either to money up and pay $1 per game, so per round you play, or you buy one week pass or you buy a f essentially a month pass, a monthly pass. Who thought that would be a good idea? To their defense... To that if, I mean, I, <laughs> oh, God. I'm sure you want to go there. I'm, I'm trying to see something, something um, positive. It's all right. You can do that. And they offer unlimited passes for seven days or 30 days. So, yeah, they do, but still. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to look at the positive side of this. And yeah, but. No one purchased the full unlimited. Uh, place for the yeah. game seven days and 13 days. <laughs> I, I mean, let's do Warzone free, but so, oh. let's be honest oh why would anyone shell out cash for seven days or 30 days when they have Fortnite, when they have, like Bum Bum said, Warzone, yeah. when they have. A trillion of better options PUBG. to play you Battle Royale. Own a PUBG <laughs> yeah. Or any version of it. So just yeah, exactly. You just you just need to you just need to look around a little bit and just get a better game. I think there are free downloads available that are better than this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a PUBG looks exactly the same as this game. What I can say. Uh, like there is absolute the map looks the same the the health bar looks the same you know your, your inventory looks the same it's just what were these guys thinking about i i think they were they were earlier than pubg though so if that's really calling one they use as a framework that's it's true. just it's just yeah. that no one remembers the calling that's actually the yeah. issue nobody gives a toss about calling they had something going they were ahead of its time when it was released yeah. They were Battle Royale before the entire craze started. The thing is, it was pretty niche because it was more focused on melee combat than uh, shooting. Yeah, yeah. And it did that very well. I will give a, I will give them that. They did that very well. Then they, like I said, started to change everything. And now they become insane. Yep, they Frenched it up. <laughs> they Frenched oh. it up. Oh, oh God. Yeah. Yeah, that's so. If you want to have a laugh, just look at the announcement trailer of that mess. Shall or we go with a uh, with another Twitch. Canadian company? Yeah, <laughs> doing wonderful. Yeah, stuff. we we, we French it up. <laughs> nice, nice segue there. Did you know that CD Projekt Red has surpassed the next company we will talk about as the most valuable gaming company of Europe? Yep, and it makes sense. Yes, because they don't carry just their own games on their store, but also third parties. Yeah. So that's the thing. I think it mostly comes from their store, but I'm not surprised because they're also for investors. They're much safer because they're steadier than, say, those big fluctuations where Ubisoft last two big projects just crashed and burned which was the In, uh, yeah. Ghost Recon Wildlands. And what was it? Wildlands? Breakpoint. 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 Yeah, yeah it just crashed and burned. And Division 2 was also yeah, just, underperforming. It, yeah, heavily. I mean, you can think of the games what you want, but financially they weren't very yeah, they well were received. Yeah, financially, yeah. yeah. So, and as, as of now... Ubisoft has updated the terms of services. Yep, really poorly. Uh, in, about uh, this. Po poorly, poorly for. Yeah, um, for, for so us. kind yeah. of like very beneficial for the company. Yeah, I mean that's always how it is. Those contracts are always more beneficial to the you know to the ones who are writing it than to you yeah. who's accepting them. But yeah, they worded really, really poorly their new TOS update. 
the terms of service update that made a lot of people think that uh, any user created content and they didn't really well defined user created content belongs mm. to Ubisoft. So a lot of people co uh, thought that, you know, your YouTube videos, your streams, whatever you make about their games is owned by Ubisoft, but it's not that. It's just they poorly define user created content. It's fragmented within the contract, what actually they define that as. So it mostly pertains to stuff like your character within the game, your decals, say if you play crew one and two, whatever like vinyl or decal you make for those cars. Mm -hmm. If Ubisoft likes it, they might nick it for the next game or use it within, you know, whatever uh, so games. It basically gives them authorization for them to, let's say, if you create a character or something that looks really good or whatever, like, let's say they want to use it on their next game. They don't have or to, they ask want to you. make yeah. a video or... of, uh, on of promoting the game or something. They can yeah, use yeah. a picture of your character. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's or giving yeah. Them, it's giving them the, the you know the the, the permission the authority to. of yeah. being able to use it without you asking for any monetization, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So the thing. basically, in an extreme case, I imagine just you are, uh, let's say, you are a streamer. You are an aficionado of racing games. You play the crew to a lot. Mm -hmm. So, what would you want to do? The what? What would be the first thing you want to do? Is to put maybe your logo of your stream on your car, on your favorite yeah. car in the game. So let's see. Ubisoft sees that and they say, "Whoa, that logo looks really damn good." And they take it and they just put it into Crew Three. I yeah. mean, it saves unless you the... A, unless it's a trademark. Like, yeah. yeah, that's exactly. the thing. Like, if you have a trademark, you can fight it. Yeah. And they will have to remove it. Yeah. But if it's, you know, if it's like a really cool design and it's something you made for, for a specific car and yeah, they can just take it and use it in Crew 3 or whatever if they so choose to. Yeah. Unless it's your, like, trademark design. Yeah. That's exactly what will happen. Yeah. So, broadcasters out there, streamers out there, you better get those trademarks in. Yeah, just copyright your logo, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, isn't that kind of like what Blizzard does with Warcraft Three? Uh, Warcraft Three. Yes, um, it was. It yeah, was kind maps, of yeah. the same. Is for the maps. The same thing. Yeah. They, can't, they own. They basically on on the terms and conditions. So basically, they own every single. Uh, user yeah. created map, isn't it? Yeah, yeah but they okay. also like yeah. It okay. it goes the even. There is, it's like, those maps, mm -hmm. they also n can take the idea for the map. Say, so they don't, uh, so they will not lose a rights to something. Say like Dota. Exactly. Because Dota started as a Warcraft three mod. Yeah. Yeah. And so then those guys uh, went and did their thing independently. Now under these new terms of conditions for the Warcraft 3 Reforged, if somebody comes up with a mode like that, Blizzard will own it. That's way more insidious than what Ubisoft did, actually. Yeah. Because yeah. then they don't have to, you know, it's like bat on the back. It's like, you did great. We'll take it from here. Exactly. Because the, the more, like Bam Bam said, the more insidious thing about this is they basically also own the mods because Blizzard is still salty about Valve beating them to the punch when it comes to Dota. Yeah. And they if you if you make a mod in their engine with Warcraft 3, they just own it. Period. Mm -hmm. And as far as there are so many meme mods yeah. now for Warcraft Reforge, just people taking a you know, taking a shot at Blizzard. Yeah. A huge shot. That's actually the the thing that's why I actually say the updated TOS for Blizzard are still worse than Ubisoft. Ubisoft is just yeah. ultra poorly worded. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I mean, the, the, the who... issue with it, yeah, I essentially like because of full disclosure, I like I have background education in law, but it's mostly civil and uh, criminal prosecution. So I don't have like a whole lot of you know knowledge about the business law. But 
going through like a couple of articles and uh, the video goes to show you from Hague Law, who goes through the stuff. It's it's really poorly written and I don't think I think it's not intentional. Just whoever wrote it didn't really understand the idea of what actually user created content in games can be. Yeah. So like the definition is fragmented into several different pieces under the UG, uh, UGC tag. Yeah, and I also work with law full disclosure. I translate law texts, contracts, etc. for a living. And I'm doing pretty good at it. So after I read it and not just watched the video of a YouTuber I follow, I would say that, yeah, I agree with Bum Bum that we have just an extremely poorly wording here at play. It would be a nightmare to translate, actually. Yeah, I think it it warrants a rewrite just to make it clear and for Ubisoft to also cover themselves. Yeah. Imagine we are defending Ubisoft here. Ah, oh, the world's ending soon, I yeah. guess. <laughs> Better get ready for that red moon, guys. Yeah. Oh, God. No, but, like, they don't own your soul. They just don't. No, they don't, yeah. And I mean, wrenched it up again. Yeah, if I if I take if I take that TOS literally, they would run into trouble with the law anyway. From one of the biggest markets for video games, this is no, where I, think... I live. No, no, just yeah. just just give me just just give me a second yeah. here, because it is by law actually impossible here to own someone's image. You own your own image. I know what they mean by image now. It's more the in-game characters you created with their games. But like in the terms of service, like they stated, you think they own your image, as in your personal appearance. And this is literally impossible in Germany. No, I think it's law. possible with pretty much every single country, unless there's like specific laws. But as far as I know, your likeness is always protected by the law. Yeah. Like nobody can take it away from you or use it without your consent. That's why when you see like companies like advertisements shooting either like promotional photos or videos out in the public, anyone there has to be notified that something like that is going on and they that they're like giving their consent for the likeness to be used in whatever they're shooting. You can, you have to get explicit co uh, consent here to shoot someone even out in public. So, yeah. I mean, they, I think pretty general here, like anywhere else as well. I don't think it's everywhere else like that. I think if you are in in America, for example, in the U.S., if you are there, do your are out in the public, that and you get shot by by someone on camera, you don't have that same right, I guess, because I it's a public ask space for your face to be blurred. Yes, or you that can do that. To be removed. Yeah, you still have that kind of protection, but yeah, I don't think. I, I think maybe yeah. in the US it's like that. Yeah, you that don't you don't have to give like a an actual like a vocal consent. Yeah. You just have to remove the consent. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so like I said it's basically or like Bam Bam also said poorly worded. Yeah. Might have been just, you know, going don't through buy a couple of translations. Yet. Uh, probably not familiar with the, you know, how the word might be used for gamers. We also tend to misinterpret, the, you know, a lot of things and, you know, tend to be very, I don't know, go Reactional. crazy about, yeah, like our reactions tend to be. And also, you know, like kind of like the gaming press, you know, IGN jumps in or GameSpot jumps in and they're going to create a lot of thoughts around it because they want to have also a bit of publicity for themselves. Uh, uh, we also have to, you know, uh, I take everything with, you know, a bit of pinch and needles and, you know, trying to make, you know, know what they really meant. I actually, you know, watch uh, both sides of the stories and yeah, it's just simply, you know, kind of everyone going a bit overboard with it. And, you know, obviously at the end of the day, you know, you, you need to have an eye catching uh, thumbnail for YouTube, so everyone click on it, yeah. you know, click yeah. right. You we all know what, what everyone is doing. So it was simply the fact that you know they me me. No, yeah. it's not mistyped. They typed everything. They misread at, yeah. exactly as if you weren't. You know, if you were your person was the person in real game. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, not in real game. Your person in the game. So they are wording everything as if you are that guy 
in Wildlands, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No, uh, you as a person, or you as a streamer, or you as a YouTuber. So yeah, it's kind of different to uh, the first impression. Obviously, when we spoke about it, uh, was they, they doing something you know absolutely crazy and kind of like it kind of reminded me to what uh, Nintendo is doing, isn't it? Nintendo. Yeah, they claim. Similar, they kind of oh yeah, everything. the Nintendo partners and stuff. Exactly. Yeah. I kind of like reminded me to that. I was like, oh, that's gonna be another Nintendo you know, thing going on. So it's going to be spreading out now. They're going to be, uh, that's going to be the new thing. Everyone, every company is going to be owning whoever is playing the game. But no, it, it happens to be just a misunderstanding a bit of force around that because people want a bit of clickbait. Yeah, it's, but, it's, yeah. A, it's a, flo it's, it's a, you know, mistake on both sides. On your best side, it's just poorly written. Whoever, mm -hmm. you know, went through it should have written more than just a first draft. And also, like on the reactionary side of YouTubers and those who cover news media, is a thing that not a whole lot of them have even a basic understanding of exactly. how to read a legal contract. Exactly. Yes. And they, and they, they, they tried the clickbait. We all know, you know, how the practice yeah, yeah. goes. You know, you, you want yeah. the clickbait, you want to get the, the, those views, and you want to get that. Uh, yeah. At the end of the day, I think it's just way too dramatic. Uh, when I read the other side, you know, this guy. Um, yeah. You actually was it you or could you send the, the videos for me to watch, you know, both sides and I was like when I watched the second one, which is the you know, the lawyer kind of you know, he knows what he's talking about. He's like, Yeah, yo, guys, just chill. Yeah. <laughs> just chill. Absolutely no issues here. There's nothing crazy. It's just poor wording. Don't worry about it. You own your stuff, you own your channel, they're not going to own you by your means. Like absolutely nothing. Just don't worry about it. You just keep yeah. doing what you're doing. Or if they like how you paint your character and how they might use it in one of their videos they might use it in one of the games simple as that that's yeah. all there is to it i mean it's basically kind of also they could if you don't have your own likeness in it or uploading footage from gameplay i guess they could just for the lack of a better term steal your footage and use it because it's yeah. theirs without crediting you that's the worst that can happen, I guess. Well, at the end of the day, I think, you know, uh, a YouTuber or, 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 or a streamer, if you see that as a way for you to make money, you're completely wrong, let me tell you. If Mixer goes and use my footage now, because Mixer actually do that, if you guys know, Mixer actually uses footage from actual streamers and do a story about it and they do a post about it. I don't see no streamer trying to claim that because at the end of the day, you have to look at that as they actually, yeah, they're actually promoting you as a, you know, as a channel. They're promoting you as a person. They're promoting your YouTube channel. They're promoting your, your, your mixer or Twitch channel. Yeah, because that's the thing. If if they use my my footage, I would, you know, I would not try to get any money out of it. I would be proud of, you know, they actually thought of using my, and this is actually going to help me in the long. Maybe not today, because maybe today they make a lot of money because they posted the video on YouTube and you know they're making money, but. Uh, it's kind of like the mentality of you know YouTubers and, and streamers. I need to make money out of this. Mm -hmm. Not it's, everything um... is make money right now out of this because that might actually help you get three hundred new people, three hundred new subscribers. So you know, uh, it's, it, I say as a completely different thing. So it's also yeah. the mentality that people want to use it for. Oh no, yeah, here like Ubisoft isn't gonna use like videos. Like the contract just makes it clear that it doesn't, but it comes out of it that essentially it's just the actual in-game content. Uh, content. It's not. It doesn't pertain to anything outside the game you make. So any videos, streams, whatever, they will never touch it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's gonna, awesome. you know, it's a bit a bit eccentric. Awesome. I'm going and jump into it. Oh, so... Yeah, though I think it, like we we should still be wary of these changes, just because yeah. you know they're get they're trying to get a closer grip on whatever like content is within their games. I would just keep an eye on it, just in case it doesn't start creeping outside the games. Just like my mother said, it, it lays the ground floor. It, it's perfectly fine now, but it lays the ground floor for something more insidious that might come. Yeah, might so come. It's like give finger, take, they take hand. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So for now, it's all right. You can accept those terms of services. I'd say if you don't do it, you lose your entire library, as far as I know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you should do that by August twelfth. 
is the deadline, I think. I think, yeah. And you can go from there. So, yeah, that happened. We defended Ubisoft. Mm -hmm. We, we they're actually not, they're did. They're not that bad. I mean, I think I'm, I'm starting to be an influence on you guys. <laughs> we, we influence each other, and I like that. But like I, like I said in a previous podcast, I call stuff like I see it, and if Ubisoft did nothing wrong, they did nothing wrong. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this this was a moral thing, like because people were reactionary. Yeah. It like as I said, it's like it's fault on both sides, but at the same time, yeah, I, this was a bit of a reaction to this. I mean, I understand both sides in yeah. this battle because gamers and YouTubers, especially, are afraid of just more restrictions being put on them in these days and i fully understand that that's why we get these overreactions and especially on youtube where making money these days is kind of hard we have the entire shenanigans where people go after each other sponsors which is also absolutely crazy we have the apocalypse we have a lot of stuff happening on youtube so I kind of understand where they are coming from. We yeah. don't really have these issues on Mixer because it's a rather small community. We, on the other hand, obviously Ubisoft wants to tighten their legal team yeah. and stuff so they can, so they don't have to worry as much about stuff that can happen to them because the contracts was also, or the TOS was also updated in that yeah. regard. As I said. It's not, as you said, it's not that big a deal, but keep an eye on it still, yeah. just in case something more changes. I don't think nothing will be changing anytime soon from them. <laughs> unless, yeah, unless they do like six tracks they, of it. They get, I mean, it makes me laugh how much backlash from anything they do, they take. It is. And yeah, I actually agree with you on that, Val. Ubisoft is, of the big companies we have, or of the very, very established publishers like Activision, like EA, and mm. whoever else is there, is still one of the more moderate ones. They still yeah. play into the same playbook. They still yeah. do the same shenanigans I'm not fond of, but they're still, let's say, more low-key on that. Yeah, I mean, and... we, we have to remember, you know, EA is the worst company to work for for how long was it three years in a row yes and okay, then okay. That, that is beyond ridiculous yeah and then there's outlandish people like Xavier who blow everyone out of the water yeah <laughs> that thing still makes me laugh yeah it's just so stupid <laughs> we gotta go in depth we gotta go in depth with the whole monetary system of that game yeah yeah i we we need to keep track of how that goes and where it is in one week i just want to so give an doing update. a post-mortem next week or post-release yeah we are doing we are doing a post-mortem or post-release next week we need to keep track of that situation and how it goes guys i think that's a good point to wrap up everything yep yep you are amazing this was the OrcaCast episode no six we are on episode six actually yeah Oh my god, I said five in the intro, doesn't matter. It's episode six, people. So if you disagree with us, thump the video thoroughly down. I still love you. I love my two beautiful co-hosts, Lord Val over here, streamer extraordinaire, and Bam Bam over uh, down here, who is a moderator extraordinaire and support my friend Val over at mixer.com Lord Val Gaming. Support me at mixer.com slash Alcosaurus and you can support Bum Bum because he doesn't stream but you can support him anyways by just saying hi in the comments to him. So leave a comment. We love you. Thank you for listening and take very good care of yourselves. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye.